Hi class, I wanted to do a, a quick video to explain to you the two assignments that are due uh, regarding the literature review and the organizational diagnosis project. So if, you, uh, if you've reviewed the syllabus at all, you'll see there's two main projects for this class. And uh, this week, uh, what you need to do is identify the topic for your literature review and identify the organization for your organizational uh, diagnosis project. So you don't have to do a whole lot of research on these and not long projects, papers that are due this week, but you do need to put in some good thought work into the topics so that when you, uh, so that from going forward, you can begin to, to do some research on those um, because they're significant. Each of them are significant projects and you want to identify the, you know, the focus at this point. So let me talk about each one of those uh, in turn. So let's talk about the literature review project. So the literature review project is a, uh, a very substantive paper whereby you go in depth on a particular topic in the organizational behavior literature. So if you're not familiar with this term, uh, a literature review essentially is, you know, looking at something from uh, in, in the current relevant literature uh, from peer-reviewed sources. So you're not looking at pop press or websites or anything like that, but you're looking at articles that are typically empirical and that are in journals related to, uh, to the field. So fortunately for you guys, the APU library is a rich resource uh, of journal articles in that regard. So the first thing you need to do is to simply identify a topic. Now, for a good literature review, you want to kind of get narrow. Um, you don't want to look at, you know, I'm going to do a literature review on motivation. Okay, motivation is way too broad, right, as you're probably learning this week. What about motivation? There's a particular theory of motivation that you want to look at. And so what you want to do is you want to, uh, you want to scan the literature and find articles that are relatively recent in that particular uh, in that particular area. Now you might do a search for say the last five years on Maslow. Let's say you're interested in Maslow. Now, I wouldn't recommend Maslow, but let's just say you wanted to do that. Uh, in the last five years, you're probably not going to find much because the heyday of Maslow was like, you know, in the fifties and the sixties. So if you, if you, if you find a topic and you don't see anything in, currently on it, it could mean that it's, it's kind of dated. Nobody's still researching and writing on that particular topic. Um, so, you'll want to find something that's relatively current and that has some recent interest. So some of the, you know, getting to the motivation example, if you look at some of the intrinsic theories of, of, uh, of motivation, those are going to be a lot more current um, and, and relevant. You'll find more recent information on those. So, so as you're thinking about topics, do some initial researching in the, uh, in the library databases also, you know, I'm a fan of Google Scholar. I think you Google Scholar will help you find stuff. And you can actually do it, you can set the dates in there. Say, I only want things from the last five years, you know, 2005, 2020. Um, and try to be specific. Now, how do you find a topic? Well, again, I know you're only in week two of the class here. So you really haven't been exposed to that much. So what I would recommend is going to that table of contents in our wonderful textbook and scan the different topics for things that look interesting to you. You might see something on teams and say, yeah, man, I work in teams all the time. I wanna do some research on teams, team development, team formation, maybe conflict in teams, team leadership. There's a lot of great topics within teams. Or you might wanna look at some of the larger issues like strategy, structure, uh, organizational culture, things like that. But again, those are very broad. So you wanna kind of narrow it down uh, as you're doing your research to a specific area. So in the instructions, I've given you some ideas. You can kind of do a compare and, compare and contrast idea. Um, my, my suggestion is find something that's current and that's interesting to you um, and then really go deep on that. So we'll get more into the specifics of the literature review later on, but I just wanted to give you a heads up because at the end of this week, you do have to pick your topic. And I want you to really do a lot of work now to find your topic so that you don't switch because invariably a student will come to me like, you know, one week before the project's due and say, oh, Dr. Marco, can I do my project on this topic instead? And I'm thinking to myself, well, what have you been working on for the last, you know, five weeks if now you're just switching your topic? So 
you, you don't want to waste your time like that. You don't want to start working on something and then change your mind. So, so this is the time to really think about the topic you want to do. So again, I, I know you're just getting, you're just wading into the topics now, but take an hour or two and just scan the topics of the textbook and see something looks interesting to you. Do a little bit of research in Google Scholar or the library databases. See what you find out there. Is anybody still interested in this? And if you look at the, uh, the, the references for each chapter, you'll see the dates of the articles in there. You'll see what's relevant. So if you look at all the articles that they use to support their theory and they're all like 30 years old, well, you're probably not looking at a very current topic anymore. So try to find something that's current. I say within the last 10 years, that's probably good enough for, for this assignment in this class, all right? If you have any problems finding a topic or if you wanna bounce your topic off, off me before you submit it, you can. Now you don't have to because Next week, I'll look at all your topics and give you feedback on them, let you know what I think. So you don't have to ask me, is this a good topic before you send it in this week? Just send it in, I'll let you know at the end of the week if it's a good topic, and if it's not, you can change directions next week, okay? So if you pick a topic this week that's a, you know, doesn't seem all that good, we'll, we'll discuss it and we'll move on from there. All right, so now let me talk about the other project, which is your organizational diagnosis project. Now, this is another big project. Uh, whereby you're gonna choose an actual organization. Now, it could be your work, it could be your entire organization, it could be a department that you're a part of, um, it could be a church, it could be a nonprofit. Any organization that you're a part of or that you have an interest in um, that you have access to. So it can't be like Google or Amazon or one of these big corporations, unless of course you work there. Uh, it has to be an organization that you actually have access to. Now, what does access mean? Access means that uh, the, the management is willing to let you do this research there because at some point, you're going to have to collect some data. You're going to have to talk to people, do some interviews, um, do some, uh, some surveys, stuff like that. So you want to get some data. So eventually, you're going to get data uh, for this project. But at this point, you simply need to identify what the organization is. So uh, if you look at the instructions there, you'll see what I'm looking for. Choose the organization or the subunit. Give me some background on that, why you chose it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and that's about all that's due for that for now, is just identifying the organization. Now, invariably, somebody will say, I don't have access to any organization. What can I do? Well, talk to me. We'll figure something out. We'll figure out another project for you. But do your best to find some organization, right? And you might even have to go talk to your boss at this point and say, hey, I'm doing this project for my... My graduate program, is it okay if I do this project here? I'm gonna have to you know, do a couple interviews, toss out a couple surveys to our department, is that okay? Uh, get permission before you uh, choose it this week so that way you know you have access, right? So don't pick an organization now and then next week your boss says, no, you can't do that. Also, you know, just by way of encouragement, let them know that this is you know, a substantive project. This is the kind of project that organizations often pay consultants a lot of money to do. So you're gonna be using a very credible uh, research model and you'll be giving them some information on you know, areas that are important that will help the organization grow and operate better. So you know, do a bit of a sales pitch and let them know that you're not just monkeying around there, but you're gonna actually give them something, you could give them something that's very valuable for the functioning of the organization, all right? So enough said about that. If you have any questions, comments, let me know. Again, I know these are big projects and we're just kind of getting into them here and I didn't give you all the details, but at this point, those are the details that you need to know. The topic for your lit review and the place of research for your organizational diagnosis project. So any questions, give me a holler. Glad to help you out. Blessings to y'all. See you online.